Welcome to ATCM, the Women's Medicine Channel. Shall we see? Yes. 37 year old female patient, uh, she was a known case of uh, psychiatric disorder patient, uh, come to uh, ER with uh, elevated stuff delivered cell from with the ingestion of uh, tap lithium carbonate mm. 300 mg uh, around 10 tablets. 300 mg 10 tablets. So the total cumulated dose will be 3000 mg. 3000 mg, mg or 3 grams. 3 grams. Okay, fine. Uh, Around uh, 7 p.m. Okay. Uh, then uh, come to our ER. Okay. Uh, initially, she went for an, uh, a nearby hospital within one and a half hour. Mm. From there, they had done a, uh, uh, put her ice tube and gastric lavage. Okay. Then patient came to our ER. Okay. Uh, on arrival ER, on initial 10 second assessment, uh, patient was conscious and oriented. On coming to primary survey, airway was patent. There is no pooling of secretions or gurgling. Uh, breathing part, respiratory rate is 18 breath per minute. Saturation is 99% in room air. Bilateral equal air entry. Circulation BP was uh, 140 bar 90. The pulse rate is 90 per minute. CRT less than 2 seconds. A disability was GCS is uh, V4, V5, M6. It's pupils bilaterally equally reactive. An exposure temperature was normal and GRV is 140. Okay. Now, okay. So we have a uh, 34 year old lady. Uh, I'll just wanted to add, she's on chronic lithium. Chronic lithium, since six okay. years so she is on That tablet. makes a little bit more sense. Already somebody who's taking on chronic lithium, now she has overdosed the lithium tablets mm -hmm. around three grams. three grams. So that is a history. So why that is very important? Uh, we can uh, divide the toxicity of lithium into three conditions. One is acute toxicity. That is a patient not in intake of uh, like you know stem drug intake of lithium, acutely injecting the lithium. Then acute on chronic toxicity. Uh, that is like this condition. Patient on chronic lithium uh, intake will taken like delivered cell from uh, acute toxicity. Then uh, chronic toxicity. Okay. So, what are the differences in these three group of patients? So, what will be the clinical manifestations in Group 1, that is acute, acute lithium to toxicity. Acute lithium toxicity, uh, they will present with the gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, because delayed CNS manifestation. Delayed CNS manifestation is usually very, very rare. Yeah. Usually, acute toxicity, we will just see GI symptoms. Yes. Just like you are, imagine that you are in, ingested in heavy metal, they are having uh, uh, acute yes, GI symptoms. symptoms. So, that is the only thing that you will be able to see. Chronic that. toxicity will cause neurological symptoms because already the serum levels are, uh, level with lithium is there. So, it will cause neurological symptoms. Okay. Neural symptoms like uh, initially person with uh, coarse tremors. Fine tremor is not only therapeutic dose, we can get fine tremors. Uh, in this patient, we get coarse tremors. Uh, agitations, uh, hyperreflexia, rigidity, seizures, coma, uh, ataxia, confusion. Okay, so that is almost acute on chronic and chronic toxicity. What will be the presentation? Chronic toxicity. Uh, chronic toxicity, usually they will come of non specific symptoms to the emergency room. We will be thinking in terms of a sepsis like a picture and there is some amount of renal failure also. Mm -hmm. So, we will be going ahead and checking that why the patient has come to some electrolyte disturbances. So, metabolic derangements we will be seeing. So, on that background we will be seeing that the patient is taking on lithium. Mm -hmm. So, that should strike that are we dealing with a lithium toxicity. So, usually uh, acute toxicity, GI symptom. Acute on chronic toxicity, you will have some GA symptoms mm -hmm. and neurological manifestation if the therapeutic level is already on the higher side. Mm -hmm. If the therapeutic level is on the lower side, you do not get any CNS symptoms in that situation. And chronic toxicity, they will have some CNS manifestation, some non specific complaint is what they will be presenting you to the emergency room. So, that group of patients is a little bit tricky, but when you see lithium, you have to be more conscious. So, what are the factors associated determining lithium toxicity? What are the various factors that will say, okay, this group of patients are more susceptible for lithium toxicity? Uh, uh, patients uh, already are taking uh, lithium. Okay. Then uh, renal dysfunction patient. Renal dysfunction. That is very, very important. Renal dysfunction patient. Then. Of course, maximum expression is done by uh, kidney. By kidney. Already a known CKD patient who is on lithium, the risk is double. So, you have to be very cautious for those group of patients. Then. Uh, hypothyroid patients. Hypothyroid thyroid patients. patients. Thi lithium can cause thyroid disturbances, hypo as well as hyper. hyper. Both can be taken. But so that group of patients you have to be a little bit careful and elderly age elderly groups. groups. Elderly age group, again, you have to be very, very cautious. You have when you are treating uh, them with lithium. So again, lithium has got very narrow therapeutic mm -hmm. index, just like uh, any other uh, drugs. Point eight, uh, point uh, point can you tell me few drugs that have narrow therapeutic index? 
ചാർക്കോൾ Yeah, there is no role for active charge so because it is a charged ion so it is not able to absorb, absorb the so there is no role for activated charcoal the next thing what are the other uh, blood gas parameters that you wanted to assess uh, what is uh, something specific to lithium in renal dysfunction it will cause metabolic acidosis specific to lithium it can cause low anion gap metabolic acidosis so we have heard about high anion gap normal anion gap no low anion gap metabolic acidosis is co- one of the acid based disorder that you will be seeing with lithium can you tell me other two electrolyte uh, other two metals that can cause iodine and bromide toxicity so just for the sake of conclusion these are the three metals that can cause low anion gap metabolic acidosis okay so that is regarding uh, our uh, blood gas analysis now coming to the management aspects how will you plan the management aspects of the patient uh-huh. we have to again be <coughs> divided into three acute toxicity those who are coming with sudden intake of uh, this much amount of uh, lithium so which can be which is significant intake when you when you can say that which is a significant intake more than 25 grams more than, more than 25 grams uh, is a significant intake that is a toxic dose rather than uh, more than 2500 mg we will evaluate the patient as uh, toxic stage so there okay then how will you manage them uh, initially in er we can give iv fluids uh, to hydration make, is hydration the key okay. because uh, lithium has a anti inhibit the anti diuretic hormone action is there so patient will present with polyuria and polydipsia so we will hydrate the patient if the cardiac care kidney function is normal to maintaining a output of 1.5 to 3 mg per kg per hour then we can give uh, gastric decontamination by uh, one is by uh, gastric lavage and another by peg we can give uh, with 500 ml to 2 liter we can uh, we can give peg okay uh, then we send the lithium levels uh then uh, ecg to rule so out lithium level can you just elaborate regarding lithium level lithium level normal therapeutic level is uh, 0.8 to 1.2 milli equivalent uh, if patient presenting with a lithium level of more than 2 milli equivalent without any symptoms we will uh, see that patient to- lithium toxicity or more than 1.2 milli equivalent with any symptoms like nausea gastrointestinal symptoms or neural symptoms also you know uh, called as tox- lithium toxicity uh, so what does that indicate we need to do a take patient for dialysis dialysis okay so it's a dialysable toxin so that dialysis. is one important message that you want to give so when will you indication for dialysis and lithium toxicity uh, patient, any patient with any serum levels with presented with severe severe lithium toxicity symptoms like neurologic symptoms. irrespective of the level levels mm. then uh, then patient with a lithium level of 4 uh, milli equivalent more than 4 milli equivalent with baseline creatinine 2 mm. uh, then patient presented with uh, lithium level uh, more than 5 milli equivalent creatinine is normal and person see your symptoms see so you have to uh, go ahead with dialysis. dialysis usually how many dialysis is required uh, in lithium toxicity uh, we will require multiple types of uh, multiple modalities modality, modality and turns of dialysis needed because lithium toxicity have a rebound phenomenon is there so if after one dialysis uh, we will send the lithium level then after 6 hours again send the repeat the lithium level because there is uh, there is a uh, chance for uh, in, uh, coming back of lithium from intracellular to extracellular phenomenon is there so you have to be caught is and you have to maybe 3 to 4 of session of dialysis yes, might okay. be required so that is one Up important to the serum thing. level less than 1 milli equivalent we, we have to dialyze, dialyze the patient session. okay then any specific antidote that you have for lithium antidote we don't have any cardiac arrhythmias that it can cause uh, lithium causes uh, prolongation of qtc with flattening of tvs uh, and bradycardia and arrhythmias okay so uh, whether the question asked here is whether you want to make this case as a medical legal case or not As that is a uh, usual uh, doubt in any everyone's in mind what is the clarity what is the present status of making a medical legal case for uh, the suicidal letter if you feel like patient is uh, the case so like what is when somebody is coming and asking you uh, police is coming and asking mm-hmm. you why you didn't make this as a medical legal case deliberate uh, every deliberate self harm is no need for inform the police so you have to tell him regarding the Uh, can prognosis of you, not the prognosis you have to tell regarding the legality, legality involved so what is the new bns what is bns 
Bharatiya Nyaya Samhita. So IPC is totally out now. You have to know Indian Penal Code is not there. So BNS is the new name. Bharatiya Nyaya Samhita. That is a new name of all the criminal laws. All the new Nyaya Samhita name is BNS. So previously, even there was IPC, there was a section called as 309 where the suicide attempt was made as a police case. So that was the reason when we were telling that we, every case should be informed. But what happened in 2017, there came in something called as a Mental Health Act. Mental Health Act, what they said, every case need not be made, a suicidal attempt need not be made to be informed to the police. That will cause further torture uh, to the family. But it was never incorporated into the IPC. So there was a confusion whether IPC 309 was already active. But in 2017, there came in by a Mental Health Act. The, we should not be informing uh, all suicide cases to the police. So there was no clarity. During that time, this Bharati and Nyaya Samhita came in. So I think there is BNS 229 or 226. I am not very sure. So there is only one thing what they are saying right now. Suicide attempt causing a blockage of activity to a public servant is only a police case right now. So, so some, suppose you have taken a, you are planning to construct a building. The <coughs> municipal council is not giving... Uh, uh, an agreement or he is not giving clearance to that. So, you are threatening him by doing a suicide, by preventing him from doing his work is only to be registered as a medical legal case. Otherwise, the rest of the suicidal attempt are not medical legal cases. But that obviously you need to inform. There is no confusion. You need to take a statement from the family, uh, from the patient, not from the family, from the patient and you need to document and keep these things. But making it as a medical legal case is only this per, as per the new uh, rule that is the BNS Bharati and Asamta. I think it got updated last year or something. So that is the present status of making whether to make or not to make. So you should give me why you haven't made. This is the new rule that you can sell. I don't remember exactly 226 or 229 is a BNS uh, Bharati and Nyaya Samhita. So that is the number. So what is the natural regarding lithium toxicity that you wanted to tell now? Uh, lithium toxicity, if patient came with within 4 hours, we can start with IV fluids and decontamination. Tell me 5 points take home message for lithium toxicity. Mm. Acute toxicity mm. rarely have neurological manifestations. Mm. Just symptomatic management. Unless and until they have consumed 25 grams more than that, we just need a symptomatic management. We don't need anything else and it will have GI symptoms. So that is first. Chronic toxicity, acute on chronic toxicity, they might develop some mm -hmm. CNS depending upon the therapeutic levels. And chronic toxicity, the presentation will be totally different. When somebody is coming with altered sensorium, some renal failure, you should suspect lithium toxicity, diabetes insipidus. Like you said, mm -hmm. all those things, polyuria and all those things, you need to suspect, am I dealing with lithium toxicity? Then the next thing is the GA decontamination, the role. And chronic toxicity, there is never a role, but acute toxicity, GA decontamination can be done. No role for activated charcoal. The next important thing, what you need to keep in your mind, QTC prolongation can be the hydration is the key. Low anion gap metabolic acidosis is what you can expect from these group of patients. And next important thing is the lithium level. So, irrespective of the lithium level, whether there is a clinical feature, the patient should be taken for dialysis. So, lithium talk. Can you tell me other drug which is dialyzable? Barbiturates. Barbiturates. Uh, maybe chronic yes. toxicity, maybe you can think forced diuresis. Mm -hmm. That is the additional thing that we can try. Maybe you can put some bicarbonate in one liter of uh, dextrose and you can maintain a pH, urinary pH above 7.5 or 8. Urinary alkalinization or forced diuresis, that's what we say. So that is the only uh, indication. Otherwise, there is nothing else that you need to be done. Dialysis is the key. M needs multiple mm -hmm. episodes of dialysis also. Okay. So how is the patient right now? She's okay. Yeah, she's okay. Completely. What was the level for her lithium? Uh, lithium level is 0 0.7. 0 0.7. But this patient, the TSH was 50 micro. 50. 50 is there. So, 50 was the TSH. TSH. So we started on hypothermic medication. Then uh, leukocytosis also there. Lithium also causes leukocytosis. So what is the role of thyroid in psychiatric disorders? Uh, in thyroid, it is a main hormone in uh, maintaining the mental function. Uh, so, we will maintain the normal level of thyroid. So, very important hypothyroidism, suicidal tendency, mm -hmm. that itself can create all those things. So, correcting that hypothyroidism is more important rather than putting her on lithium. Mm -hmm. So, uh, maybe lithium would have caused hypothyroidism, we don't know. Or there was already hypothyroidism, we are not aware. But now, her primary thing, we should control on her hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. Okay. And always make sure that we are giving a psychiatric counseling mm -hmm. for this patient <coughs> before the discharge. <coughs> Fine. Thank you.